welcome to Behind the Music for Daily Hope. I'm Kristen Holton Prouty, and we're finishing up our Ruth series here at Victory Lutheran this weekend. So I do hope that you'll be with us either in person or online to hear the end of this wonderful series as we've been learning about Naomi and Ruth and all of the struggles that they've gone to. And then like every good story, we have a happy ending. So you won't wanna miss it. As I was thinking about this story, and what we should sing this weekend, a hymn came to mind. Now, often people ask me, oh, as a musician, what's your favorite hymn or what's your favorite piece of music? And it's really hard to narrow it down. There's so many that I love, but every time that I play or I sing this hymn, it touches me very deeply. And that's, oh, love that will not let me go. It's just such a powerful hymn. Now, there was a Scottish theologian. He was even writing while he was in school before the age of 20. They said, you know, he may have gone on to become one of the most prolific and well-known writers and theologians and authors if it hadn't been for the fact that he started to go blind. And at the age of 20, he was just about to embark on his career. He was already becoming respected. He was engaged. He was excited to be married. And he started to realize he was losing his eyesight. So he told his fiance, and she didn't want to spend the rest of her life taking care of a blind man, and so she called off the wedding. Heartbroken, he continued to write and to study. He went on to be a pastor, and he had a sister who said, you know what, your work is very important, and I'm going to take care of you. And she did for many years. But also a man came into her life, and she fell in love, and she went to be married. So here is George. And on the eve of his sister's wedding, he's sitting there thinking about, you know, not necessarily losing his sister, but losing the relationship with the person who had helped facilitate him becoming as respected as he was and as a writer and a pastor and so on. And then also, uh, no doubt, reflecting on his own marriage that didn't happen. And so the sadness of that. And he wrote, of all the poems that he's written, this is the only one that he never revised. So let me read you two of the verses. O oh, love that will not let me go, I rest my weary soul in thee. I give thee back the life I owe, that in thine ocean depths its flow may richer, fuller be. And then the third stanza, this is a capital J. O oh, joy that seekest me through pain, I cannot close my heart to thee. I trace the rainbow through the rain and feel the promise is not vain that morn shall tearless be. So this weekend, as we finish up the story of Ruth and we think about all the pain and the loss that both Ruth and Naomi suffered, and then they were redeemed by Boaz, not just for temporary contentment and care in life, but they contributed to the lineage of Jesus who became our Redeemer. It's a very special story, both in the context of the Old Testament and also as we look at our eternal life. So there's a really lovely arrangement of this. It's part of a cantata that was arranged by Lloyd Larson. And I've asked my good friend and colleague, Allison Unglaub, to play along with me as we play Oh Love That Will Not Let Me Go. I'll be back with you next week. Mm -hmm. 